Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. My name is Krista and I have another what we eat in a week video. I am starting it off a little bit different though. I normally just kind of get right into the recipes, but I am starting it off a little different because I wanted to let you guys know what I am going to be doing for the rest of the month of July and then August going forward. As you can see, we have a lot of garden produce that we are starting to bring in have more over here too. We've got some butternut squashes, some Canada crook neck, lots of cherry tomatoes. We're bringing in watermelons. So what my goal is for the rest of July and for the month of August is every single day I am going to make something that is going to incorporate something that I have picked within the week. We are very much seasonal eaters, so I try to incorporate all the garden stuff when it's in season, but I thought I'm really, really going to focus my menus. Normally I make a menu a month in advance and I kind of go loosely off of that menu and just kind of pick and choose what meals I wanna bake that night, like what I'm feeling like. But what I've decided to do is go outside, look at the garden, kind of assess what we have fresh. And then from there, I'm going to plan a weekly menu. So going forward, all of the meals that you are going to be seeing are going to be incorporating something that I have picked within that last week. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on going forward. So every time I bring something in, I'm gonna plan a meal around it. So I have some really fun meals planned this week to show you guys. So I hope you enjoy this video. The first meal on this video, we are making one of our most favorite meals, and it is sushi. So I had brought in some cucumbers from the garden, and it kind of inspired me to get some sushi made up. We had some smoked salmon that we'd bought in a while ago in the fridge, and I needed to get it used up, so I thought I was gonna make sushi tonight. So I have two cups of a short grain sushi rice there. I actually just purchased that on Azure Standard. Now I'm rinsing it off. As you can see there, that water when I first started was really, really cloudy. The recipe states to rinse it for at least two minutes. I actually think I had to go over two minutes. You just wanna get that water to run clear from here. Once I get it drained, I am going to put it into my Instapot insert there, and then I'm gonna add two cups of water to that. I'm gonna put this into my Instapot and I'm gonna put it on low pressure and we're gonna cook it for 12 minutes. Once the cooking time is complete, we're gonna allow it to naturally release for about 10 minutes. So while it's doing its cooking time and as it's releasing, I am going to get like kind of the marinade for the rice ready. So in a small bowl, you are going to put a quarter cup of white wine vinegar, a quarter cup of seasoned rice vinegar, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and two tablespoons of sugar. And then it does state to add it to the microwave for one minute, so you're pretty much trying to get it warm to, to dissolve that sugar. And then you're gonna stir it until it is completely dissolved. Once it's done doing its natural release or the 10 minutes, you're gonna take it out of the Instapot insert and put it into a glass bowl. And then you are going to stir that marinade over top of the rice. What I do when I make this sushi rice is I like to make it in advance kind of in the morning. So you wanna cover it with a wet towel and just kind of leave it sit. It kind of helps that rice work in all of that marinade. Steven actually requested that I make some yum yum sauce to go with the sushi. So it is really, really simple to make. Um, and I like doing it myself because I can kind of use my homemade ingredients like my mayonnaise. So I took two cups of my homemade mayonnaise I added two tablespoons of tomato paste, you can use ketchup also, two tablespoons of melted butter, one tablespoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of onion powder, mine is really um, like solid so I have to use a, a strainer to kind of get it to powder up, <laughs> and then one tablespoon of smoked paprika, a quarter cup of water, three tablespoons of sugar, do not use sugar or use less if you decided to use the ketchup, and then some hot sauce. I just used some of my homemade hot sauce there. You're just gonna whisk it together and just leave it in the fridge until you need to use it. So I'm gonna get our sushi assembled now. I'm gonna make a sushi roll that we really love. Where we get our sushi, it's called a Philadelphia roll. I don't know if it's called that everywhere else, but it is a really, really basic, delicious sushi roll. It's pretty much just avocado, cream cheese, 
smoked salmon rolled together. Now I do cut up some cucumber here. This is actually one I harvested from my garden this morning. Stephen doesn't like cucumber in his sushi, so I just kind of put mine on the side. And this amount of rice ended up making about six full sushi rolls. So I'm gonna take that rice that we made together and I'm gonna put it on top of a sushi roller. I can leave these linked for you guys in the video description. It's just a little kit that I got on Amazon. I don't think it was very much. Once I get the sushi all kind of flattened on that sheet, you wanna kind of make a really thin layer with it. You don't want your rice too thick. I'm gonna add a nori sheet on top of that rice. I'm gonna take some cream cheese here and just make kind of like a strip of the cream cheese at the bottom of this roll. And then I'm going to take some avocado and put it along the cheese and then some smoked salmon on top of that. And then I'm just gonna roll it all together. Now it usually takes me a couple of rolls to kind of get like in a, a good rhythm and get them to actually look okay. <laughs> the first couple sushi rolls look a little bit of a mess, but once I get going, they all start to look a little bit better. The one thing I love about making sushi is that I get to snack on these little end pieces while I'm making it. It's kind of a bonus to being the chef. I'm gonna take some black and regular sesame seeds there and just sprinkle them on top. So once I get them all rolled up, then I am just slice them into their individual pieces. I like to kind of keep water on the side when I'm making sushi because your fingers get really really sticky that rice it's called sticky rice for a reason <laughs> so like I said earlier this particular amount of rice made six rolls I really really love making sushi from home because it is such an economical thing to do so I just took one roll there and then I took some soy sauce I took those cucumbers put them on the side and then I actually took some pickled red onions and also had those on the side and then some yum yum this was again this is one of our favorite meals and it's always really nice to have this so we are still using up these zucchinis. I am starting to get a little tired of them, <laughs> but I have so much. So tonight's meal is kind of an odd meal for being that we probably were 95 outside on this particular day. I am going to make a zucchini soup. <laughs> A nice hot hearty zucchini soup on a 95 summer day <laughs> but I'm running out of ideas on what to do with zucchini so I found this soup recipe the reviews were really really good again I have everything linked for you guys in the video description I'm taking three zucchinis I thought I needed four but by the time I got all of these sliced up and peeled I realized I only needed three medium-sized zucchinis the recipe calls for five cups of zucchini cut into chunks so that's what I'm doing here is just getting it all sliced up a couple weeks ago I harvested all of my onions and they are actually just curing right now so I went outside and grabbed an onion and got it all diced up the recipe states to use one small yellow onion diced then you are going to take two potatoes I just used a white potato it says use enough to equal one pound um, the recipe does state to use a russet but I used a white and it turned out really really good um, so I'm gonna get that all diced up and it says to dice it into equal pieces so that it cooks evenly I added two tablespoons of butter to a a large stock pot and I'm gonna melt it and then I'm gonna add that onion I'm gonna cook that onion for a couple of minutes just until it starts to brown up um, as you can see there I really brown it up pretty good <laughs> I'm really not used to cooking with onions so I tend to overcook them a lot of times you're gonna add about two tablespoons of garlic cloves there and then you're gonna put your zucchini in you're gonna season that with a quarter teaspoon of celery salt, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, a quarter teaspoon of dried thyme, a quarter teaspoon of rosemary, and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, and a pinch of cayenne pepper if you would like it to have some bit of heat. This had no heat. I did not add enough cayenne pepper to it. You're just gonna get all of that stirred together so that it starts to cook. You're gonna cook that for about five minutes until it starts to get soft. And then you're gonna add your potatoes and you're gonna add three cups of chicken broth to that and one tablespoon of soy sauce or Worcester sauce. I actually came back and added a little bit more salt because I remembered that my chicken broth is unsalted so I did not want it to lack that extra flavor. Once it is all cooked, it does say to cook it for about 20 minutes until it is fork tender and then you're gonna take it off of the heat and immersion blend it or you can put it in a blender. It 
just kind of work in batches. What you want to do is just make a completely smooth soup with this. This is one of the reasons I actually took the skins off of my zucchinis was because I really wanted the soup to be really smooth. So now I'm adding half a cup of cream to that you can add half and half and then I'm adding one cup of cheddar cheese and then we're just going to stir it together until it's melted I made some grilled cheese for us also so it was a soup and grilled cheese kind of meal for like I said a nice beautiful warm summer day <laughs> I I'm getting desperate for zucchini recipes but this recipe was really good and I probably will end up making this again in the fall if I'm growing more zucchinis because it was good for the next meal, I am going to make some bison tacos and I'm going to make a corn salad to go on the side of that. So I'm just getting my corn blanched right now. I'm taking some salt and just adding that to the water. You want to boil your corn in heavily salted water. After five minutes, I removed the corn and then I just actually ran it under some cold water just to kind of stop the cooking process. Another cool tip that I actually found online, I don't remember where I found this, but somebody suggested putting a touch of sugar in your corn water and apparently it helps the corn sweeten up. So I just added a little pinch. I didn't notice a difference. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm just taking those corn cobs. They are a little hot, but I am getting all of the kernels off of the corn cobs um, you want to use about three to four ears of corn just enough I was really just kind of eyeballing this um, salad I had looked at a couple of different salads on Pinterest and I kind of just took about three different recipes and just meshed them together how I wanted it to kind of what the outcome I wanted so we are drowning in cherry tomatoes right now. I am bringing so many cherry tomatoes in every single day. So that was the other reason that kind of inspired this recipe was to get my cherry tomatoes used. So I'm just having some little cherry tomatoes and grape tomatoes there. And I had a couple avocados, so I'm just slicing them up and I'm going to add that to the salad. Now, Stephen doesn't like cucumbers. I think I mentioned that on another meal. So I'm just cutting up a cucumber and I am just going to put that on my particular salad salad because I love garden fresh cucumbers. And then this morning I actually noticed that I had some cilantro in my garden that hadn't bolted. So I thought I was going to pick it right away because we are super hot and I did not want it to bolt and I thought this recipe would be perfect with that cilantro taste. So I'm just getting it really finely chopped up. We were gifted 20 pounds of deer meat from our friend. His son, I guess, is a deer hunter and he, he got a lot of deers this year. And they gave it to us because they said that they are honestly getting sick of eating deer meat. So they gifted us with 20 pounds of meat, which is such an amazing, amazing gift. We're very, very thankful for it. So tonight we are going to make some tacos with that meat. I'm just getting that salad all stirred up and then I'm going to make a dressing for that salad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use two tablespoons of avocado oil. You can use olive oil also if you would like. And I'm going to add about two or three tablespoons of lime juice and then about a couple garlic cloves or about a teaspoon of garlic there. I added lime juice here and I actually came back and added a little bit more lime juice to it. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt. Uh, about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper and then a pinch of red pepper flakes just for a little heat. It didn't add any heat. I need to really start adding more of these heat features because I just am very gentle with it and then I end up not even tasting the, the red pepper flakes. <laughs> so you're going to pour that over top of the salad and just get everything stirred together there. Now I thought it would be really good to add some of this um, cheese. It, I can't remember the name there. I think you can see it, what it's called there. But it's like a Mexican crumbly cheese. So I added some in, stirred it in, and then again I had to come back and add a little bit more lime juice to it because it wasn't, it didn't have that lime flavor that I was going for. So once your meat is all browned up, you're gonna come in and add some taco seasoning. I can leave that video linked for you guys. That is just some of my homemade taco seasoning that I make and it is really delicious. So I added about a quarter cup of water to that, maybe, maybe half a cup because I think this was a little bit over a pound of meat. So I'm gonna let all of that meat kind of absorb that liquid and you wanna cook it until all of the liquid is actually absorbed. So then we just got our tacos all plated up. These 
are some tortillas that I purchased from Azure Standard. They're really, really good and they're kind of my go-to when I don't have time to make tortillas. And then I added some of those pickled red onions. I actually made those in, I think, two videos ago of what we eat in a week meal. They're still really, really good in the fridge. And then I just topped it with some of that cheese. Now this salad, guys, was just amazing. Like so amazing. I am going to be making this again. We actually went back for seconds of it. It is such a refreshing salad to have on a hot summer day. Unlike that soup that we made the other day. This was good. The next meal I wanted to get some hams smoked. I had them curing in my fridge for about seven days so they were ready to be smoked. So I put them on the smoker. They look beautiful here but this is not how they ended up and I will tell you about it in a minute. Um, but it was kind of a little bit of a disaster. So I was out that morning picking some fresh herbs for my garden and I noticed that I actually had some fresh dill which is really odd for this time of year because normally it's already all gone to seed so I wanted to get it used up because I love dill so I found a recipe on Pinterest for a dill pickle pasta salad so I thought I would give it a try sounds good what I'm doing right here is just making up some mayonnaise because the dressing does call for mayonnaise and I don't buy it it's so easy to make fresh so what I'm doing is just whipping up a quick batch of it I just took one full egg and one egg yolk and then I added a heaping teaspoon of dry mustard, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of white vinegar, and then one tablespoon of lemon juice. I'm just mixing it together, and then you're gonna slowly immersion blend in about one cup. Sometimes I use over one cup of light tasting olive oil. I like to use light tasting because I find if I use regular olive oil, it's really, really strong. So that's what it turns out to be. And it literally takes two seconds just to blend it up. So I'm gonna get some pasta boiling here. I just add a little salt to the water. Once it is boiled, I'm gonna strain it and you're going to rinse it right away with cold water because you wanna stop that cooking process and you're gonna cook them to about al dente. After you get them rinsed, you're just gonna set them aside. Then I started to make the dressing for the salad. I'm gonna give you the measurements that's actually in the recipe itself. I didn't make as much because I knew it was just gonna be me and Steven eating it on this night, so I didn't wanna make too much and have it just sitting in the fridge. So what I'm adding here is 3 fourths cup of mayonnaise, one half cup of sour cream, a quarter cup of pickle juice from a pickle jar, half a teaspoon of onion powder. Mine is all like solid rock, so I have to use that strainer to kind of get it to break up a bit. And then you're gonna put a quarter teaspoon of fresh black pepper in and whisk it. What I'm doing now is just kind of making the components of the pasta salad. So I'm using approximately eight ounces of cheese. I would definitely recommend using a sharp cheddar in this. I use this marble cheese and it was okay, but it was actually, I think, too soft of a, a cheese to use in this. I think a sharp cheddar would have tasted way, way better. So I'm gonna get that cheese added with the cooled pasta, and then I'm going to slice up approximately two tablespoons of fresh dill. Now I used way more than two tablespoons because I love the dill taste and I always find that it doesn't add enough to it so I added way more. Then you're gonna take two cups of sliced dill pickles. I'm just using some dill pickles that I had made last year and then you're gonna stir it all together. Once you get it all stirred together then you're gonna add the dressing on top of it and just stir until it's combined. I let it sit for about 10 minutes just to kind of work together and get cool in the fridge. I was gonna get the ham all sliced up. There's what it looks like, it's a lot more burnt. So what happened is because of the topping that I put the, on the ham, I put a lot of mustard, honey, and brown sugar on it. I guess it kind of dripped over in the trigger and it ended up starting a grease fire. <laughs> So the whole ham got kind of charred, but it turned out actually pretty good. So this is me just plating everything up. I put some salad there and some ham, and then we still have a lot of corn that we're trying to eat through. So we're having corn with almost every single meal, which isn't a problem because, again, we like to eat stuff in season. So we're not going to eat this amount of corn in the dead of winter so it's nice just to have it while it's in season but other than the minor grease fire that I had in the barbecue <laughs> everything turned out really really good and this salad was actually quite a hit I wasn't sure about it because I thought dill pickle and then pasta salad but it's really really delicious for the next recipe we are going to make a butternut squash pasta sauce um, this recipe is actually from 
the blog Farmhouse on Boone. I love her cooking styles. She cooks very, very similar to me. She cooks with very, very fresh ingredients and she cooks with a lot of sourdough, which is exactly how I am in my kitchen. So I found this recipe on her blog. Again, I will leave it linked for you guys in the video description. I'm just taking a Canada Crookneck squash, which is, which is essentially the same thing as butternut squash. It tastes the same, it cooks up the same. So I'm just getting it sliced and hauled out there and then I'm just putting a little bit of avocado oil on it and some salt and I'm gonna cook those for 45 minutes in a 375 degree oven. I have a couple really small onions here and I'm just getting them finely diced up. After the 45 minutes, you're gonna check your butternut squash and you're gonna make sure that it is fork tender. Cooking times definitely vary depending on how big your squash are. These were really small, so the 45 minutes was perfect for that. So you're just gonna set these aside just to kind of cool down a bit. In a large stock pot, you're gonna take one tablespoon of avocado oil, you could definitely use olive oil as well. You're gonna add your diced onions and you are going to cook those until they are translucent, around about five minutes. Now she, she does suggest to add garlic with the onions, but I never add them right away because I find garlic burns really quickly. So I add it literally 30 seconds before I add any of my other ingredients. You're gonna take one block of cream cheese. I think it's eight ounces is a block. You're gonna add one cup of half and half, half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, half a teaspoon of dried sage, three fourths teaspoon of salt, and then one fourth teaspoon of cinnamon. You're gonna get these all mixed together really good. I actually decided to use a whisk instead of a spoon. I just found it broke the cream cheese up way better. Also forgot to add, you're gonna add a pinch of uh, black pepper to that as well. In another large stock pot on the stove top there, I actually have some pasta boiling. I just boiled that pasta till al dente and then I drained the pasta and just kind of set it aside to cool for a minute. What I'm doing now, now that my butternut squash or my Canada crookneck in this case has cooled down a little bit, I'm just gonna scoop it out and add it to a bowl. I'm gonna add this butternut squash to the cream cheese mixture that we made on the stove top. Get everything good and incorporated. You're gonna actually use the immersion blender and immerse it until it is completely smooth and everything is just kind of mushed together. Now this sauce ended up being way too thick for us. It was almost like a, I said to Steven, it kind of reminds me of like an egg salad sandwich texture. Definitely I'm gonna thin it out next time I make it, but it was really, really delicious. It was it was a recipe that I would expect from her. So you're gonna add your pasta to the sauce. You can definitely pour the sauce over top of your pasta if you would like as well. And then I got had some sourdough bread there and I just got them toasted up in my oven because they were kind of stale, so I wanted to freshen them up a bit. So they went perfect on the side. So this is the last meal on the video. I hope you guys enjoyed these meals. Uh, gave you a little inspiration for the upcoming week and just to use some garden fresh stuff. I hope you guys have a great day or night whenever you're watching this and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys.